ladies and gentlemen in the house at large, sports today is an ever-changing and uh, always um, evolving method of having fun and entertaining everyone else. And when we talk about sports in the professional arena, there are a lot more connotations that come with that. We see perception of people in the countries, we see the envisioning of members of sports, or we see envisioning members of sports teams, and we see sponsorships, and we see all of these aspects. And all of these aspects will indeed today be covered by side proposition. But before I begin, I'd like to just I'd like to start by offering our policy. And the reason why that is is because our policy is intricate on two levels. And the first level is how the sporting arena works today, and what we want to do in this um, degree of sports. We just want to analyze what people are doing to um, deter people away from doping in sport, uh, in, general, in general society, in general sport, and how that has been ineffective. And my sec our second proposition, our second um, part of the policy is going to be why we're going to include this part, uh, this part of our policy. And this policy, what we're doing is not only are we saying that we are pardoning members court of this act, but we're going to completely support it. We think that doping in professional sports should be completely allowed for reasons given to me, uh, reasons given to by ourselves here. Now we think we have a simple burden. Our burden is all we need to do is to prove that the um, involvement of this motion in to, uh, the involvement of this motion will have a positive effect on sporting in general. And in the case that I shall be talking about how legalizing this policy makes professional arena a lot better, not only for sportsmen, but people who watch those sports, spectators as well. I shall also be talking about the natural evolution of sport and why we shouldn't even question this being given into us in the next part. Uh, this is why we shouldn't be uh, questioning this policy at all. And my third, uh, third point will be on health implications and how we're going to get around that and how we believe uh, that works out. My second speaker will talk about quality in sports and how in the modern era, we just see ineffective ways of dealing with dopers in general. So my first point will be talking about how legalizing makes this professional arena better. And in the professional arena, we see a multitude of people, lots of which are deterred from taking part in their sporting activities on the basis that people are doping. And what this really means is we're going to use the Twitter fast as an example, as it is a very controversial example. What we're going to do with this is there are many up and coming aspiring cyclists who want to indeed cycle for a living, but they are deterred away from the Tour de France, um, for, which is definitely the biggest cycling race, on the basis that they just, they just feel defeated and they're going to be beaten by people who don't anyway. And we think that this is a negative thing wholeheartedly. And my second case as to why this would be better in a professional arena is most of all because, well, um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that everyone has equal rights. And right, well, we, what, we don't want everyone to be equal. Um, apologies for that. What we want is we want everyone to be able to make sure that what they do to this, their bodies is their own choice. It's better on the first the question. question. No, thank you. It's better on the first. Uh, we'd like to continue with this case by offering um, one or two points that will convince you that this is the good. This is the best idea. To Best decision, and possibly could we, we could possibly include in professional sporting arenas. Um, in the natural evolution of sport, we should be talking about Diego Maradona, the famous hand of God, someone who denied a pivotal goal in a World Cup match played um, some time ago. And why we think that this is relevant to today's debate is that they didn't have efficient ways of dealing with that case. Med the opposing team definitely felt discriminated as they had a decision that was made for them unlawfully and unjustly. What, what happens now is we have cameras and we have angles and we have referees dedicated to making sure acts like this don't happen again. Don't happen again. And what we want to do is we want to say that cameras in sporting environments are a natural evolution. Cameras such as doping. Doping is a natural evolution. Sporting is just, we are striving to be the best we can possibly be. At the moment, we control academics, we control the way we think, but we cannot control physical capabilities. No human being will ever be able to go toe to toe with a bear. In the same way is that if we increase, or if we allow doping in the professional sports arena, we can increase the layer. We can add this extra layer into which people will be, um, into which people will have uh, an aspect to improve in their sporting careers. So the natural evolution of sport is obviously an important thing, and we think that this is a healthy engagement. We also don't believe that sporting will turn into an issue of chemist against chemist. 
we think this on two levels. The first level is that at the moment, sports things are already just shoe company against shoe company and bicycle company against bicycle company. And we already think that this just isn't justified. Yes, I'll take your point. Um, so you're speaking about you can't choose your physical body, I don't know, advantages. But at the same time, you can't choose the people who live around you. So therefore, if you don't like the people who live in around you, therefore you can kill them just because you don't like them, even though it is illegal and amoral. Okay, I don't think, well, I don't, what you're probably doing, and so the easiest way to give that POI is to say, should we question the morality of doping? And we think that that's true. Look, mora doping isn't, doping is only immoral in today's society because the policies of, the, the policies of um, sports allow it to be. If we increase it and make it legal, all that it does is it decreases deterioration and it increases the way in which people play the sport. It increases sport in general, and that's what we think is what we want to do. We want to limit unfairness in sports, and we want to, um, we want to gather a positive perception on the sport in general, no thanks. So my last point in today's speech is the health implications of taking um, performance enhancing drugs. And the first point that I would just like to mention uh, right off the bat is that performance enhancing drugs fundamentally aren't what harm the sportsman. What harms the sportsmen is when they take these performance enhancing drugs, because the policies are against them in such a negative way, they feel as if they need they, they, they feel as if they need to cover this up as much as possible. They go to radical measures. So we're talking about blood transfusions, we're talking about the way in which um, they manipulate their bodies in order not to be caught. And this is negative. This is what's getting our sportsmen in trouble uh, on a healthy state. This is what happens to Lance Armstrong, practically one of the healthiest human beings on earth, battling cancer, taking out everything in his way to be shut down and getting blood clots and being unhealthy because he made a radical decision in order not to be caught. And also on this basis, I'm sure everyone would like to know why we can justify this. And why we can justify this is basic. When we want, when we make a doping legal for everyone in sports, uh, it just increases the research and increases the money that goes into making these. So if there were any um, implications, health implications of doping in general, we do believe that at this present, uh, we do believe that if we implement this motion, those harms will not be there. And, and actually, fundamentally, at the moment, we, dis we disagree with that there's harms anyway. But we would like to say, you know, um, if there were to be harms, that's how we would deal with it. More research, more ways in which people can act upon this. So in the last minute of my speech, I'd like to conclude by mentioning and concluding all the points that I've said. And first of all, I prove to you how legalizing makes the professional arena a lot better. It makes it more fair, it decreases deterrence, and it increases the um, people to get their head in the game. I've to told you why natural, na the natural evolution of sport is a very important thing on the basis of how people view sport and how sport is viewed by the members of, the, by sportsmen in general. And I will also, I have proved to you that the health implications of performance enhancing drugs are in fact not a factor. And my second speaker shall also be talking about the ways in which um, we don't want people to be using these uh, these drugs in the cases of like school sport, and club sport, and how that that is immoral. But we believe in the professional arena where everyone takes the sport as seriously as all of their competitors. We do believe that in this case, the motion definitely stands, and you cannot give this motion to opposition. Opposition takes it. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're not giving the chance to the position team to respond to the um, arguments that were forwarded by, by the government. Dear Madam Speaker, thank you for the floor. Now, uh, I'll divide my speech into two main parts. Firstly, the rebuttal, and secondly, my constructive. Now, they said that sport is an ever-evolving and ever-changing concept. Yes, that is true, but we believe that using doping should not be part of that evolution because, uh, and we prove that to you in our arguments and in our rebuttal. Now, they, in their policy, they would make the better arena and we believe that such an arena is a sadistic arena where people go to their max and in the end probably even kill each other if we're for evolution. And we believe that that is bad because what happened to the Romans when they were the gladiators? Well, they, uh, they were fairly sadistic, sadistic. They took their anger upon their slaves. And we will talk more about that in our constructive argument. <coughs> next up, no thank you. Uh, next up. That 
again, about natural, natural evolution. We believe that a human is not destined to battle a bear. It is destined to be smarter than it, to outthink it so the bear can, can kill it, not to punch him in the face long enough for the bear to die. Yeah. Um, yeah, please. Before. Sir, you're talking about how we're not going to reach the physical capabilities of fighting a bear. But that is what sports all about. That example may be radical, but we want no, to. No, no, thank you, thank you. Uh, we believe that sport is expressing your uh, is ex professional sport is about expressing the finest natural abilities of the human, and that's one of the prime uh, values that sport has. It expresses how good we really sure. are. How no, thank you. How we have evolved, and we believe that chemistry should have nothing to do with that, um, or at least unhealthy chemistry. Now, the last point they made was about getting around health issues. Uh, so, uh, if I understand them correctly, they say that uh, <laughs> per, um, personal uh, personal uh, enha uh, BADs, uh, enhancement drugs, sh uh, have to be covered by sportsmen today. Yeah, they have to be covered and they're dangerous. They're very, very dangerous. 30 years ago in the Tour de France, a biker fell off his bike. Why did he fall, fall off? He was full of amphetamines. He was full of all the possible drugs available at that time. And his heart simply exploded. No, thank you. And we believe that uh, research is being done even though doping is illegal to make it more hidden and better. So we don't need to legalize it because we'll have more dead bike men and that is bad because that people are bad. Um, no, thank you. Now, um, um, on to our constructive part. We believe that personal attention drugs are very dangerous and that sport should be family friendly, not a sadistic battle arena where our finest gladiators clash themselves with yeah. full of uh, enhancement drugs. No, thank you. And um, other things that chemists evolve these days. Uh, next up. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so you mentioned that we don't want it, we want it to be family orientated, but yes, cycling is inherently unviolent. Gladiators, the example that you seem to be using, is inherently violent. We don't think that's oh, We believe that cycling is violent if a person goes 80 kilometers up the slope with his bike because that's not natural. What's not natural we perceive as violent because we're creeped out of what's not, what's not natural. That's uh, the human nature of uh, perceiving things. And uh, the sport is shown to a broad, broad audience, to a family, and that uh, audience are families, are children. And we believe that children make idols from sportsmen, and the children are most affected by the values that the sportsmen uh, impose. And I will talk about uh, that in my argument, which, come, uh, which will come just now. Um, now, uh, I will talk about how sports sends a message to people that watch it. And my, uh, our second speaker will talk about uh, how, um, um, how pardoning, uh, professional sport, uh, pardoning sportsmen uh, after using performance enhanced, enhan enhancement drugs uh, it is forcing sportsmen into, personal, uh, into P, uh, inf enhancement drugs. Now, to my constructive, um, we believe that um, uh, doping should be illegal and it should be punished because sportsmen, uh, sportsmen and sport should send a positive message to the people. Uh, particularly the children that watch the sport and per perhaps most connect with the idols they form from the sportsmen. And we, uh, they idolize sportsmen because they exceed at their natural abilities. And natural, natural abilities is what we really show in sport. And we believe that any modification of natural abilities is cheating. And society perceives, no thank you, cheating is wrong because that's how society is built. We say some things are wrong, we put laws so we can punish people that cheat and do other things that are generally bad. So society takes cheating as bad, we know that, but how, how will these idols impose their values on the children if they're pre-taught that the cheating is bad? Well, no, they won't because idols have a bigger impact and a bigger influence, no thank you on children and on uh, perhaps elderly, uh, more older people than society itself because children are in the stage of development and they take much more from an idol than they take from uh, society, which has uh, to this point taught them way less than idols. Yeah, before my next point. 
um, surely if uh, if we make if we legalize it, then children will be uh, then it won't will no longer be cheating. No, because society perceives doping as cheating because it was illegalized. Something that is illegalized uh, it stays in the human mind uh, as something uh, on which you cheat society. Right. So no, thank you. On something which you cheat the social contract on, and. Uh, if idols impose an idea of cheating, they also impose other ideas that are bad. And one of those ideas that they think is good is unnecessary self-harm. We believe that sportsmen shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be allowed to take doping because it harms them and it's unnecessary. They harm themselves every day to enhance their physical ability by training, by iteration, uh, and such, uh, such and such, to achieve success. We believe that sportsmen already do enough of this and they don't need that extra pill they'll take every Sunday morning uh, to enhance their ability or perhaps even every day. And what do we get if this motion is passed? We get an anarchical state of sport, a sadistic battle arena in which everyone is allowed to do everything. That will, is bound to happen to sport if we legalize doping, which is perceived as cheating. And if this happens to sport, this will surely spread onto society. And if it spreads to society, we get an anarchical society, which is 10,000 years back into the past. And we think that that is bad because that's why we uh, instated the social contract to prevent cheating, to prevent people from being killed on the street. And we believe that you should oppose this motion. Thank you. We are now giving the chance again for the government to sustain their arguments. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that, the, that our proposition, our first proposition's case still is with uh, still withstands as they have not that side opposition has not given uh, a forceful enough case and not proved enough any of our points wrong in this position um, and for now I'll explain that in the rebuttal well uh, first of all they said that it's going to be a sadistic battle arena and we disagree Obviously, there, there will be a law placed on how much of the form, performance enhancing drug you can take. You, you won't be able to just overload yourself to death. This is a situation that we do not condone, we do not think is a good idea, and we think will, is, will not happen if this law is passed. This will only happen if the law isn't passed, and these people don't know how to regulate the amount of performance-enhancing drugs that they take. Now, secondly, uh, in order to combat the, the reason that they, why they thought it would be a sadistic battle arena, is because they, no, thank you, they thought that these people would be freaks, these think people would be abnormal, and that therefore they said that they would be bad. Well, we believe this is fundamentally wrong, uh, and is just... Uh, that's not um, moral. It's an immoral statement, and we think that that would be harmful to the to. Wait, their idea of that is is not doesn't stand. You said that it would be cheating if they were to take the drugs, but it's become. But uh, as far as we're concerned, cheating is breaking the rules, breaking the law. This won't be cheating, as it will become the new law. People will be allowed to take these performance enhancing drugs. Oh, sir. Yes. If cheating is allowed in sports, why should it be allowed in schools? Well, it's not allowed in sports. What we're saying is, it will no longer become cheating, as if this is a law that is passed. It's a law that these people will be allowed to take a, a stable amount of these performance enhancing drugs. Um, now I'll be talking about the equality in sports. No, thank you. If we wanted true, if we had true equality in sports in the current day, would we not allow? What, why do we allow people to use different bicycles? Why do we allow people to use different clothing brands? Surely they would just go naked because that's the most logical 
reason. That's the most but stripped sir. down. No, thank you. That's the most stripped down uh, form that a human can be, that, and uh, would obviously be the most uh, equal, uh, equal. But we believe that with this doping, the, and the equality that it will represent, that it will stop the deterrence of young entrants that may, as he mentioned in his first speech, that may be deterred from this, uh, from these sports, as they believe that there are too many other people that may also be doping, that may be, a, that may be in a level above them, and they have no chance of beating them in uh, so, sir, uh, yes. What you're saying is that if you're not good at the sport, you uh, can cut a shortcut to be a better sportsman. So what you're saying is that if you're not good at solving tests, you can cheat so you can become better. No. What I'm saying is these people would, are otherwise very good at sports, but they are threatened by the other people who also... These people train as, as normal athletes do. You can't just take a performance-enhancing drug and automatically you're the super ultra-athlete. It requires a level of skill and a level of training and uh, d demand and so, sir, per perseverance that would that you no thank you sir. no thank you you wouldn't find in any other normal person these people these pro athletes there is still training to their peak it's just that they it will stop the deterrence as, um, as uh, for these people who may want to enter and. And these people as well that may take the drugs also, they, they are also ultra-athletes. And so it won't discourage the fact that these people, that, that it just uh, wipes out the competition in sport. Now, we do not support the use of these performance-enhancing drugs on children or in local clubs. If used in an environment with children, we believe that it would detriment their health as it is they uh, as they're still developing and we believe it will be dangerous on their growth and on their mental growth um, we also believe that it shouldn't be allowed in clubs because they aren't taking they aren't taking the sport to the professional level they're not entirely serious about the sport we believe that this sport should be purely allowed in the professional professional environment as these people know that this is what they want to do with their lives. This is what they want to make their career out of. And we, there is uh, and there is no detrimental effect on their health and general physical well-being. Sir, uh, yes. how can you assure us that children won't mimic what their idols do? When we all know this is a common thing in today's society, the children mimic their idols. The children won't have access to these drugs in this situation. But sir. But sir. But sir. No, thank you. Now, I will talk about... Uh, okay, sorry. Too many young professionals have had their careers ruined uh, after taking rehabilitational drugs that have been thought to be performance-enhancing drugs. For example, Shane Warne, a, a professional Australian cricket player, bowler, uh, was after have sustaining... Well, after having an injury, he was taking re uh, rehabilitational drugs, and he was tested for drug abuse, or well, performance-enhancing drugs, and so he was he had to leave the team for six months. We believe this is detrimental to him in the way in his pride, his psychologically he he yeah his pride, and physically he is not able to do his job and he's not able to take his money as well as the people that may support this this team as they are deprived of one of their star players and it, it's just uh, obviously people watch sports because they want to be pleased they want to see people that are similar to them um, uh, excel at a specific sport uh, it's a specific thing and see the, li the things that the limits of the human body can do. In conclusion, I think we th believe that doping is totally justified as it has no harms and it will make the sports equal. Thank you.
see you again in the position trying to, to battle the arguments. <laughs> Thank you for the floor. So, what today's proposition is trying to tell us that if you're uh, if you're bad at something, you should cut a shortcut to be better at something because uh, because you can achieve that without the, the, this shortcut. Which basically means that if you're um, bad at taking tests in school, you should cheat because uh, because this is the only way you can get an A. We think that this is morally bad because first. Um, this would uh, only mean cheating, uh, even though this proposition is trying to explain to us why this wouldn't be cheating. We think that this will sti still be a form of cheating because the, in the uh, the in the in the, it's uh, uh, the sport is uh, the sport is actually um, uh, about who can uh, push his body the furthest, who can do the uh, who can do the best with his body, who can train so much that he becomes the best even without using chemically produced products and uh, cheating and uh, so on. So, no, no thank you. So, today's proposition also explained to us that uh, the discrimination that is happening now because people wear different t-shirts uh, 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 wear different t-shirts. So if we put this uh, law through that would allow doping, this would mean that all of the people should take doping and would be forced to take doping because this is the only way that there would be no discrimination and, and everybody would be equal. So uh, I will turn to this in my argument in which well, I will explain why this would be bad uh, for the people who are then forced to use drugs that would harm them. So. Uh, uh, today's proposition said that this would make sports better, but our question is, would, uh, uh, would artificially improving humans, all of those sports participants, really, uh, really uh, higher the quality of sports as we know them today? We believe that this wouldn't be the, uh, this wouldn't be the case. We believe that if, if the status quo doesn't change, the, uh, qual uh, the quality of the sport is actually higher than if, uh, if this law would be passed because um, if people do a, a good job, they train themselves, they try to accomplish what they can, they are improving the quality of the sport and of the morals of the society in which they live. So uh, if this law would be passed, then people, uh, then those sportsmen are artificially improving themselves to do a better job, and by that sending a message, uh, sending a bad message to the people who would then think that uh, doing drugs is okay, who would think that uh, cutting a shortcut in life is okay, who think that who would think that um, everything is basically allowed because uh, uh, in their minds the prohibition of this doping in today's world was still stuck in the head. And by that, uh, they would think that they are doing something bad, and they themselves can do something bad. So, um, today's proposition also told us that children wouldn't have any possible access to those drugs. But we still think that children who always copy their idols would still have, uh, would still try to copy them. They will try to mimic them. They like their idols. They often do what they do. So. Uh, just a second. Uh, so, um, um, what they do, and we believe that they will still be uh, able to get those drugs, and I will explain why later. Yes, please. Yes, but we believe that these children will do this regardless. They do this anyway because they see their top stars, and they say they want to be like that, and will take their uh, performance. Yeah, thank you. Out. But there are not so many pop stars or film actors who take drugs, but if you take, if you, no thank you, but if you take all of the sportsmen and sportsmen and make them take drugs, you are actually creating a vast uh, population of people who take drugs and those uh, people are idols. So the children will be doing that more because um, there are a lot of more people who they can mirror uh, and all of those people would be do doing drugs. So let me explain how children could get their hands on such stuff. So um, ch uh, children and uh, teenagers and minors still get alcohol, drugs, 
and uh, cigarettes and so on, even right. though they're prohibited. No, thank you. So how can today's proposition assure to us that uh, the, uh, those uh, drugs wouldn't get into the black market? And even if in some magical place where, where this would be uh, true, even if this would happen, we believe that uh, the children could still, no thank you, loot their parents' uh, wardrobe and find drugs there because some parents are not exactly good at hiding things. So they need to make constructive. Uh, I will be talking about why uh, the sportsmen would be, all the sportsmen would be forced using drugs and why this would be bad for them. So we would, at first, when this law would be passed, we would get a segregation uh, on those who take drugs, are doing drugs, and on those who are not doing drugs. So what would happen is that that, uh, that, that part of the sportsman that is taking drugs would, uh, would inherently be better, get better results, because they are uh, chemically, in uh, artificially uh, improved. So uh, those sportsmen that are not using drugs now would be forced to use them if they wanted to get similar results to them or at least uh, get some better results. So if we, no, thank you. No, we on the side of the opposition today believe that uh, forcing people to do something that is not good for them, that is actually bad for them, very bad, because as my first speaker explained to you and uh, showed you an example, those drugs are bad and even kill people. So forcing people to do those drugs wouldn't be a good thing. It would be tar it would be a terrible thing. So passing this law would, uh, uh, as they said, um, cancel out the discrimination that is going on in today's world in of sports. So this would mean that, no thank you, that all of those sportsmen that are now in sports and would like to stay in sports would use drugs, should use drugs and will use drugs. So. Um, those people will then uh, be harmed because of that, and this is bad. So, uh, I will continue my analysis of what would happen uh, after that. No, thank you. So, after that, when every successful sportsman will be doing drugs uh, only because, uh, in, or in order to be what he is, he is a successful sportsman. So, um, no, the competition in sports will not be about who uh, trains more, who can accomplish more, but about who do does drugs more. Today's opposite proposition told us that that will be monitored and uh, there wouldn't be a little dose dosage. But we still believe that people will, will, will try to be better than others because they are trying that now and they will be trying that later. And if there, uh, if all of them are taking drugs, some will try to take more, and um, uh, this could lead to overdose and so on. So, because of all of these reasons, because we think that this is bad for the society, because we think this is bad for the sport, because we think that this is sending a bad message, and because we believe that forcing sportsmen into doing something that actually don't want is bad, we beg you to oppose the motion. Thank you. Let's hear okay, again the government for their less constructive speech. Good evening to the House of Knowledge. Today we have seen that proposition has proposed a policy that we should completely support the use of performance enhancing job, uh, drugs in a professional arena. Now, the, the opposition has seemed to not understand certain points of this. And I'd first like, well, I'd like to start off with some rebuttal on these points that they have not seemed to understand. Firstly, they said that there wouldn't be, uh, that these, control, these drugs would just be less controllable. But we believe that there will be greater, um, there will be greater control upon these drugs because there won't be that underground network to get the, that the professional to get their drugs from. There'll be this open network at the top for the professionals that they can use, and it won't be the same um, use of the. Um, they'll they'll be using the same uh, drugs that the the professionals were using the drugs that um, 
work that work and the juniors won't be able to get them because they um they there's no underground but, network sir. through which to get it from. No thank you. And an example of this would be um in, in South Africa in the junior um rugby divisions we often see boys um who have taken steroids and or performance enhancing drugs and um we believe that with the if this were to be um legalized there wouldn't be this underground network through which they could get drugs still there would only be this top network and even if there were this underground sir, network it would still be safer than um uh, than it would have than originally was yes please alcohol is not prohibited there is an open market but there is still a black market for minors and those who can get alcohol it's still there is still a way to get alcohol yeah, there is a way to get alcohol, but we believe that alcohol is a different thing and it's not really relevant in today's debate due to the premise that um, we, we're we talking about a sport and not um, peer pressure or social um, social structure within minors. We're talking about sport and only the professionals will get it and there will be greater control because of the, the new um, rule, ruling and, understand, and the government will gain understanding of this policy. So say, my second piece of rebuttal is that pro, uh, opposition proposed that they would that all children would take shortcuts that it would um, give the perception that all children should take shortcuts to get to become better, but and and that it was cheating. Now we don't believe that this is a shortcut because they 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 have to work their way up to the top, and only when they're at the top can they use this um, well in their terminology shortcuts. Now, um, if and also my second part of this point. No, thank you. Is my second part of this point is that it won't be a shortcut because it's completely legal and at this level it won't be. It's completely legal and therefore it's not cheating at all. Then they said that um, sport is who can push their body most, and we believe that this is irrelevant because. This is put um, that people already push their body the most in sport today, and they will still have to continue to sport push their body the most in in a world where this is allowed and it's um, to get the full usage of these performance enhancing drugs. They will still have to use these um, use these drugs in such a way that they can um, still train as much as possible and have the best um, physical body along with the drugs. So then, um, at the at the moment, people are um, taking shortcuts without this law, and and it's giving we believe it's giving an even worse perception to children because they see people at the top who are taking illegal shortcuts, and these shortcuts, like as I said, they're illegal shortcuts. And if if children see people taking illegal shortcuts, they will get a worse perception, and it will be a better perception if children are taking. If, if the professionals are taking legal shortcuts, which we are, we do allow oh, in some sir. cases today. Yes, please. Professionals who use illegal shortcuts are punished, and that sends a message to the children that you will be punished if you cheat. Yeah, but we still see people at this level che um, cheating anyway, and we believe that sending a message that this isn't um, sending a message that this isn't cheating is. Um, is will be better and more um, effective in helping the children. But sir, yes, please. If we send a message that this is cheating, we punish those people who are cheating. Then we are sending a good message because children will know that if they cheat, they will be punished. So we, you're saying that if children cheat, then we now at, in the current moment we have children who know that if they cheat, they will do um they will get punished, and children will still know that if they cheat, they will get punished. They will know that if they take performance enhancing drug, they will get punished. And it's a current situation today that children and professionals know that if they take performance enhancing drugs, they will get punished. And um, it's kind of irrelevant that um, people are taking these shortcuts and will get punished. Um, it's kind of irrelevant that people will be using these, um, that, sorry, it's, it's irrelevant that people will be using this shortcut in such a way that um, that they will know um, that they won't know what's going on. Um, and to conclude, I'd just like to say that proposition has won this debate on the premise says that there will be no underground network through which you can um, uh, 
um, receive. But sir, um, no, thank you. Legal, uh, legalized drugs. Um, they can t that they will that it's no longer cheating because it's legal and will create a better perception for the children as the professionals are no longer being seen cheating. And um, who can um, and that's irrelevant who can push their body. The, it's irrelevant who can push their body the most because that's already happening today and it will continue to happen. And that um, and that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Let's hear now the last conference speech uh, from the um, opposition member. Opposition. One minute and a half. One minute and a half. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, dear judges. I see that the proposition side today here is very persuasive in standing by the ideology they propose. But what they fail to realize throughout this whole debate are the broader implications that their ideology brings into their world, speaking on an individual level and on a common society. Therefore, I will divide my um, third speech in three points. I will be talking about civil consequences, about discrimination, and about the actual evolution and nature of sports as an area. Uh, so basically, at the beginning of my speech, I would like to ask you an example. If debate is an intellectual area, an intellectual competition, and people are only given uh, intellectual abilities to a certain amount, is it okay that we take drugs before we go to a debating competition in order to enhance our ability to think intellectually, um, uh, to be, just to be better at it? Of course it's not. And what I'm trying to say with this example is that as soon as you impose that it's okay to enforce your actual uh, uh, intellectual or physical abilities by using drugs that turns sense to every area of life. It is, is it, if is it okay in one area to enforce your natural abilities, it is okay in every other area. That is an ideology um, that people will, will um, take on and that is the ideology that people will enforce further on. Um, no, thank you. Um, so basically, it is. Uh, I would also like to touch here the point about how if we legalize it, it is not cheating anymore. What we see today is throughout the history, throughout the beginning of sports activities, people for some reason thought that doping is cheating. And because it is commonly known by society that it is cheating, even though, even if it may not be, we don't agree with that, but with the proposition said, but even if it's not cheating, the people think it is cheating. And by legalizing it, the people will still think that something that was cheating before has now been legalized. Therefore, cheating is okay in another areas in life, and cheating should be legalized basically everywhere. The next point on the civil backlash uh, back consequences here is that you're at the same time you're saying that children won't have uh, access to drugs, but at the same time, what you're doing is by making drugs uh, legalized, um, you're actually commercializing them. And by commercial, no, thank you. By commercializing drugs, more and more drugs are being used, and more and more drugs are being developed. Yes, drugs may possibly one day be less negative uh, that they are today, but we don't believe the drugs can be enhanced to that level that they won't have any negative consequences. But by commercializing those drugs, no thank you, you're not realizing that basically when we commercialized alcohol, when we commercialized um, cigarettes, what we are doing with that, we are making them more um, available for our children. Because even though, no thank you, they can't have alcohol because they're not eating, they're getting it. And we believe that if alcohol was not legalized, they would be getting it more. Because for a 16 year old, it is harder to get connections on a black market to get alcohol that is not legalized. They're the same with drugs. And also, no thank you, they don't realize that drugs that uh, professional sportsmen use are often um, are often a mixture of, of shrooms of other LCD stuff that are commonly used by um, drug abusers. So what you're doing by legalizing drugs for professional sportsmen, you're putting those drugs on the market. No, thank you. And you're making you're also making them more available to drug abusers who already are suffering from problems from using those drugs. Um, another point. But you were saying that yes, children are doing things now today and that, that um, professional sportsmen don't have an effect. But basically what we believe is if, as soon as more people are doing something, as soon as this is commonly morally now that something is legal, there is a higher chance that people will do it. There is a higher chance that people now uh, who think it's not moral will start thinking it's moral and will do it. And why I would like to explain this, but um, imagine you have a school sports club, football club, whatever. What uh, unprofessional fields are trying to do today 
they're trying to look more and more like professional. Everything is um, moving in the direction you're trying to be better and more like someone that is your idol. And will children in their football debate, uh, football clubs, will see that professional sportsmen uh, use drugs in order to be better. They will say, okay, it's okay, I can do that, I can do it. Right. No, thank you, I can use drugs to be better than the other team. So what, you, what you're doing is you're imposing it to children. Um, by that logic. Okay, so another point about discrimination. You were talking about. Yeah. Yes. People already look up to their idols. We see in today, people already use performance enhancing drugs in football schools and football clubs and schools to be like their idols, to be better at the school. Yeah, but don't That's you think the if there is making. more people doing something, it becomes more commercialized, more people know about it, and if more people know about it, more people will think it is okay. No, basically, what you're saying is that it's better. If, that it's the same if one person uses something that if a hundred people use something. I just yeah, don't right. see the logic behind it. No, thank you. Uh, second point about discrimination. So what you were talking about that someone here uh, in sports area, a sports field has a specific advantage and therefore the sports game are not fair. But what we haven't heard here today, why is it better to to get to give that advantage to everyone than to take it away? When we have to, than to take it away from everyone because we've proven, no thank you, that sports drug have uh, overwhelmingly negative effect on people uh, and therefore we believe it is better to take the advantage away from the people that are using it in, uh, than give it to everyone. Um, so what you're doing, what you're also doing here for the sportsmen is that we have sportsmen today that think uh, using um, the second, that you think doping is immoral but what you're doing is you're putting those people who think uh, using dopes is, uh, doping is immoral today, you're putting those um, actually in a, in a bad uh, situation because even though they think it's immoral now, they will have to take drugs in order to compete with other people. They will have to, no thank you, but today we see that most of the professional sportsmen don't take, they take them and we have to ask ourselves here, no thank you, why don't they take them? They, don't, they could take them because we believe that all, all professional sportsmen have, uh, no thank you, uh, or rather uh, the same amount of money, the same amount of connections because they're all good in the same field. So basically all of them could take them, but not all of them do. Which this shows is that some of them think this is immoral and by making it, no thank you, and by making it okay for everyone, even those people have to do it even though they don't want to. Um, the last point about evolution. So basically what I want to say here, no thank you, is that sport did not evolve. What evolved were the stadiums and the mechanical gear we used to perform it. The, since prehistory, what sport is, is a competition on raw physical, no thank you, raw physical ability. And that is the nature of sports, you can argue with that. It is, if you enhance drugs, if you put drugs in sport, it is not a sport anymore. It is another field that is basically about drugs, not about actual sport. And the purpose of sport is not just to, to compete in a game, it's to take everything you have and train really hard uh, to, get, to achieve your goal and not use shortcuts. So basically what you're doing, you're devaluing the sport culture and you're devaluing the specific, uh, the general values in um, our society because people get the idea that shortcuts are okay. And what the opposition side here today thinks is that shortcuts are not okay. We need to teach people to work very, very hard with what they have, not give them shortcuts in order to achieve something um, easier. Um, so uh, what they're also doing about the quality that you were talking about, you're actually decreasing the quality of sports because what people want to see in their, what people want to see in sports is their physical powers to be embraced to the highest point. That is what people want today. So as soon as you put drugs in a competition, it's not a fair, it's not a, uh, an interesting competition anymore because as soon as you have drugs, you can achieve anything. That is not interesting to people. People want to see other sportsmen fight with their raw physical abilities, not on doping when they can basically achieve anything in Islam. Not, uh, interesting anymore. And people were also disappointed in Lance Armstrong, very disappointed. So basically, if doping is legalized, less people will be watching sports because they will be disappointed that something that they don't agree with was actually legalized. Because for all of those reasons, I'm not begging to oppose the motion one last time. Okay. Let's now hear the last page of the book. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. A very famous scientist once said the famous definition of insanity, and it was insanity uh, iter iterating the same action over and over and over again and expecting different results. And that's what sportsmen do. That is true. But 
that's still a lesser insanity than being forced into taking drugs every single day just to compete with other people that perhaps are not as physically uh, as physically developed uh, as you but they just take drugs to cut that way uh, and on that point i would like to say uh, the best marathon runner would still win if everyone had doping available but for, for him to win he would have to take doping um, now I, I will divide my speech in uh, my reply speech into six main points concerning uh, uh, concerning the debate firstly we talked about uh, we have shown you that sports sends a message to people particularly to children and that their policy would send bad values to children and children are more uh, are more um, uh, are more open to such bad values than um, and, and then to the values of society. Next, uh, the, oh, the team proposition tried uh, uh, said, had a point about the evolution of sport. Yes, we agree, sport is evolving. We now have five referees on the football field instead of one, and we get cheaters, we get uh, mistakes that are maybe made, and um, not by taking drugs. So, we already have a better arena, we don't want a sadistic drug field arena. Uh, and also, we, why should a human have to fight a bear with his bare hands when he can make a gun and shoot him? We should rely more on uh, our maximum physical, uh, physical abilities and also uh, using our mental abilities to aid our physical abilities, not interfering with the body directly, that's what we believe. Uh, next on, uh, this policy would force people into drugs. And forcing people into drugs causes addiction, that is very simple. And forcing people into drugs also makes them sad if they don't want to take the drugs, probably. Um, then, they talked about getting around the health issues and how legalizing it would promote research. Um, no, yes, they, uh, after some time they would get around some health issues. But pumping your body to the max, even if you're only a sportsman, is bad because you always had diseases when you end and adding drugs into the game would only worsen that situation we believe um, next on uh, i would like to mention some of the problems uh, that today uh, today's propositions policy brings to us they uh, they didn't show us how uh, it, how the consumption will be, will be regulated they just said that there would be a max dosage uh, that would be lethal. Next, uh, they didn't show us how to how we would exclude the option of commercialization. They just said that they wouldn't allow it to happen, but it has happened in the uh, in the past, and everything eventually gets commercialized because uh, um, things like drugs bring large profits, and commercializing something. Would probably um, and bringing it to a whole broader level of people would mean a big profit to private companies, and private companies want profit. Now, the last part, uh, the last point I would like to make is about the research of drugs. Firstly, even some plants are banned because they enhance your physical abilities. So, why would you research drugs if, you, if even something in nature? are so bad that we shouldn't take them. We believe that doping and researching of doping is very bad and uh, this does not bring equality to the, to the sport as we have shown you because uh, if two people uh, take doping and one is better than the other, the, the one that is better will always win. Uh, and on that note, I would like to end my reply speech. We beg to oppose this motion. Thank you. In our to debate, we invite again the proposition government. The proposition team. Ladies and gentlemen, for this reply speech, I will be focusing on the main two issues, that, the main two areas in which we highlighted in the first speech, and how we have complied to this, and how side proposition happened, and how we think that our points are definitely a lot stronger than theirs on a fundamental level. So, first of all, their whole third speech and the majority of the reply speech is focusing on this idea that greater control is a negative thing. And they say that even if we imply greater control, and what this really means is the legalization of these sport performance enhancing drugs will increase control. We see it with marijuana now recently, we see it with alcohol earlier in the, uh, earlier in the century, we see, um, in the last century of course, uh, we see the legalization of things like um, 
uh, we see uh, we see why we weigh up certain things that harms and control and efficacy work together to create a better environment. And this is, works for sportsmen as well. We think that as, as soon as this is legalized, we have a greater control over it. We can, to speak, and use the um, elitist way of me mentioning this to improve the way that sportsmen have play their sports and the way people interact with that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a fundamental uh, point to side proposition. And again, on this point, I would like to clarify the fact that immediately the, uh, as soon as we mention the legalization of um, uh, the legalization of doping in sports, side opposition jump towards cheating as they were uh, as they were used to describe this. And we believe that immediately, never did we say that doping is cheating. We think that doping is cheating in today's society because it undermines a couple of policies in which it gives you a, um, a special advantage over other members of the sport. But then again, if we make that legal, then of course. What would the issue be? It isn't cheating. And of course, they mentioned th this whole idea of deception, and we made it clear in our second speech, and I was going to make it clearer again, is that just because some things were once perceived negative doesn't mean that if we change our views upon that, they are still negative. Ladies and gentlemen, in the 1700s, you would have probably been murdered for wanting to be with a man if you were a male. You would have been murdered if you wanted to be, be, a be with a female if you were a female. The homosexuality over the years has been negative, and now in a modern society where we see an increase in, we see an increase in a, in a, a help towards those, and we do believe that that's moral. We understand the um, efficiency of that. We don't. We we, well, we want to express how deeply um, in our second speech we mentioned how times are changing, ladies and gentlemen. That of course goes on to how opposition have dealt with our. Um, how opposition have dealt with, with our first point on improving the arena to sports. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, they straw man this argument in the following. They don't believe in how it works uh, is going to be general. They think that our policy is irrelevant. They think that what we're doing is unfair upon ourselves and unfair upon the motion. But ladies and gentlemen, that just simply isn't true. What we're doing is they have failed to, um, uh, um, they have failed to combat. The point is, People will still have skill. People will still have to train every single day. People will still be kept track of this policy. We're eliminating the problem in the professional area. Again, we'd like to express that even if it is an issue in children's sports, even if it is an issue, it's not an issue like that today. Um, it's an issue that we can't do anything about. We don't think that that's important. We want to do this in the professional arena. We think in the professional arena, as long as we can limit the amount of um, discrimination that happens, which I will continue on in my last point, as long as you can limit the amount of negativity that happens within doping and the stigma related to it, the better we can respond to it. And this last point will just be the clarification of my second speech's point of discrimination. This probably wasn't made strong enough. This is trying to be combated. Um, this is not being combated to its full potential inside our institution. What we want to say is that people are discriminated. People don't always have the choice. They say that commercialization is true. And yes, that's true. We can see that it's commercialization in sport, which is an issue. Sponsorships attack their members. The sponsorship to attack Lance Armstrong and say, come on, we need you to win. We need you this. We need you that. We bully you into creating and taking these drugs. They bully them into unadulterated things. And we think the way up is choosing what people are allowed to do with their body and forcing people to do things. And we think that this motion still stands for proposition and opposition have failed.